Hello, this is M Special. Happy New Week. M Special is a Biafran agitator, agitating for Biafran freedom, believing, hoping strongly that we will get out of Nigeria this year because there is nothing that is difficult for God to do. Hello, my subscribers and my viewers. I bring you all greetings around the world. My Biafran people, my African people, may God continue to guide, protect, and lead us to the right place at the right time. I say to him, be all the glory that we have seen a new day. Please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, do me a favor, subscribe, share the video, like or dislike, Comment, because your comment matters a lot. Do not forget to put on your notification bell, as you will be among those that will get my video immediately I upload a video. And special is a Biafran agitating for Biafra freedom, talking about Biafra, Nigeria, and Africa in general. So this evening I want to talk about the petition that was filed in to the UN Human Rights Council by the family of our brother, our late brother, George Floyd. George Floyd and the relatives of human rights violation victims, including 600 NGOs, wrote to UN Human Rights Council asking them to look into police brutality around the world. And for this petition to go forward, they needed a support of at least one country. And it happened that the ambassador of Benin put together a petition which all the 40, 54 countries of Africa we are willing to sign and it's all signed yes that this matter must be looked into so the ambassador of burkina faso in geneva forwarded the letter to un council asking them to please have a look of this need as an urgent debate on police, police brutality, rational inspired human rights violations on African people of African descent, and against peaceful protesters around the world. So they are hoping that this week, that the UN Human Rights Council, when they start their 43rd section, after the pandemic crisis that they will look into it and address this matter this is good news for us africa this is good news for every peaceful person and citizens of this world because it is the right time and a high time that this take place so I am giving it to my African leaders for supporting greatly in majority this very petition. And I am also using this opportunity to call them that in as much as they are fighting for Africa outside, they should also look inward on themselves. How are they treating us in Africa? How are their policies affecting the African citizens? Who are they standing with? Are they standing with the colonial masters, the invaders, the Chinese, or who? Who are they supporting? Who are they taking money from, from and neglect the voices of the African citizens? What are their own police doing? As they are signing that, right in Nigeria this past week, many people are being killed for only speaking up. Many people are being arrested for only protesting that the bandits and the herdsmen and the Fulani agenda 
for Fulanization of Nigeria is coming inside houses, burning houses, killing them, raping children, killing mothers, pregnant mothers. Are the African leaders not hearing what is happening there? It is not only in Nigeria. Many crises around, the, around Africa. What are they doing? How are they speaking against it? Because I am not hearing their voices. If you do, let me know. Because we all know that they are not talking. It's like when they come into African continent, it becomes an individual country affair. No, I am calling on African leaders. The same voice, the same way they, go to, they went to UN Human Rights Council in solidarity. That is the same voice, the same action we, the African citizens, want to see them perform in Africa. Calling a spade a spade. Calling to other whenever each of their own misbehaves in their individual countries against their own citizens. Reminding them that this is the citizens of Africa, not just the citizens of that country. Removing religious bias in our African politics. It is very, very important because I'm speaking to you. The African leaders knows very well that Nigeria has no president. What are they doing about it? The story coming out of Africa supposed to make the whole African leaders to be ashamed even to go out and talk. Yet, they can go out and talk. They go, they come. And what is boiling in, at home is continue to boil. People are dying. Children are being killed indiscriminately inside houses religious crisis everywhere and they are taking sides we cannot grow like this because if we don't fight an honest fight right from home we are just fighting shadows so as i always say the ball is on the court of african leaders if they want africa to be good if they want africa to move forward like every other 21st century continent they must do the needful they must tell themselves the truth. They must fight corruption. They must stop borrowing unnecessarily. And when they do borrow, they must use the money they borrowed to do the right thing for the citizens of each country of Africa. And when that is not done, their policies, the African policies are against human rights citizens of Africa supposed to start right from Africa, in Africa. Not fighting the shadow. We have gone to UN and they listen to us because the laws works there. Does laws does laws and regulation work in Africa? Does it work? If it does, why should people be killed and shut up when they speak only in protests? Like in Nigeria. People are killed. The police will arrest you from the cell, you are killed. They will make sure they kill you, harvest your organs. Don't they know what is going on in Nigeria? Which of the African presidents has spoken against it? So I call on them that when they come home, that they should do the needful. The same thing they did outside. I want it to replicate in Africa. Tell me what you think, and together we will build a better Africa. Remember, here is where I deliberate, and you have the final say. I would like to hear from you. What do you think about this? Thank you and have a wonderful week.